Hello, welcome once again to Foundation of Faith. This is class four, what is faith? And we're looking at our last class for this, last lesson for this class, building and sustaining your faith. So how do you sustain yourself in faith? Remember that we spoke about the fact that faith comes by hearing the word of God. Let's go to Matthew chapter 14 and see a practical example of faith coming by hearing the word of God and sustaining ourselves in faith. Matthew chapter 14, verse 27. Now, the Bible says, But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. This was when Jesus was walking on waters and the disciples thought it was a ghost. But, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, it, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. That is an act of faith. Now, by seeing Jesus walking on water, Peter had hope. He believed that this can happen to me because I've seen it in Jesus. I've seen it in the word of God. But he asked for a specific instruction. Verse 29, so he said, which is Jesus, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he said, come. Peter came down out of the boat. There was a specific instruction. There was the exact response to that instruction. So that word that Jesus spoke, come, was actually the rhema, which was the actual faith for Peter in that particular circumstance. But this session is speaking around how to build and sustain ourselves in faith. So what happened to Peter in verse 30? But when he saw the wind... Sometimes when we are walking in faith, we start to see the wind. Sometimes it could be a medical report that's contrary to what God has told you. It could be that you're expecting to hear a yes, but you keep hearing successive no's. It could be that you're expecting something for a big contract or something, but it's turning the other way. The Bible says that Peter saw that the wind was boisterous. He was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. So this was someone who was looking at Jesus, walking on the word of God, who started to look at something else, and then his faith started to sink. So how do we sustain ourselves in faith? The first thing is to keep praying in the spirit. Jude, as just one chapter, verse 20 said, but you, beloved, building yourself up in on your most holy faith, now that tells us that faith is holy. It's, 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 it's sacred. You just don't use it anyhow. Your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. It said we build ourselves up in our most holy faith when we pray in the Holy Spirit. And how does that happen? Romans 8 verse 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. So it's building us up because it's helping our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with the groaning which cannot be uttered. So that is the advantage of praying in tongues. So when we are, uh, as Christians, actually we should build a habit of studying the Word of God, of meditating on the Word of God, of praying regularly, and also praying in the Spirit. Because that is how we sustain ourselves in faith. So the second thing, speak around, keep your focus on God's Word. We saw that as long as Peter kept his focus on Jesus, who is the word of God, he was walking on waters. So if you want to walk on waters, you keep your focus on the word and not on the boisterous wind. Second Corinthians 4 verse 17 to 18 says, For a light affliction which is but for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. This is magnificent. This is wonderful. But he said, why we do not look at the things which are seen. So the things which are seen are always going to try to appear, but we look at the things which are not not seen. So we need to keep our focus on the realm of God's word which is not seen and take our focus 
uh, away from the negative circumstances and the signs on the outside. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So when we keep our focus on God's word, when we keep looking at it, when we keep meditating, when we keep confessing, when we refuse to be distracted by the things that happen around us, and we keep praying in the Holy Spirit, the Lord starts to build us and sustain us in faith. Lastly, be consistent, be diligent and patient in the practice of the truth. So, the Bible says in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, and Jesus speaking to us, Then he spoke a parable to them, that men always ought to pray. So he did not say occasionally. He did not say when you are in trouble. He said always ought to pray and not lose heart. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, still on being consistent. He said, and let not grow weary while doing good. So that study of the word of God is doing good. That worshiping God is doing good. That meditation of the word of God is doing good. That confession is doing good. Don't get weary in that process. For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. James 1 verse 25, he said, But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, when Peter kept looking at the perfect law of liberty represented in Jesus, he was walking on water. He said, He who looks at the perfect law of liberty, and continue in it. So it's not something you do and then you stop doing it. But it talks about that continuance and that is patience, remaining consistent in the practice of the truth which we have learned, the rema that you've received from God, keeping your focus on it. And it's not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. There is always a work for the faith. God always inspired us on something to do. When Peter saw Christ walking on water, God, Christ said, come. Then there was a work he had to do, which was to step out and start to walk. But continued in it and does the work. This one will be blessed in what it does. So I pray that in our work of faith, we will all be blessed in Jesus' name. Let's remember this class. We started by the first lesson speaking around the fact that faith is our lifestyle. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 talks around us being the just and we live by faith. So it's not an occasional tool that we use to make our needs uh, to be met, but we live consistently a life that trusts in God, a life of faith. And we talked around the fact that the fundamentals of faith is that God is the source. He always does everything according to his will. But when he's doing those things also, he's doing it out of his grace. So you can't boast in any way. So God is the source. We also spoke around our desires, hope, and then faith. Where God produces in us desires that align to his will. That's when we start to fellowship with him, meditate. So the question we always hear from a lot of believers, ah, am I sure this is the will of God? But the more we fellowship with him, the more we interact with him, God renew her heart and produce his own desires in us us and then we have hope when we study the word of God and the scripture gives us hope but the Bible says faith is the substance of the things hoped for the evidence of things not seen so faith comes to substantiate what we hope and that the Bible helps us in a lot of ways to continue to sustain ourselves in this faith building up ourselves in faith working consistently in love what declaring our victory in praise and um, staying consistent with the things that we have learned. Thank you.